Holy shit, it's been a long time. There's not enough room for me in this camera, but I can promise you I'm behind the camera. Today I sat with uh, Steve and Tom from Mother Jupiter. They are, they are new to the scene here in Elmira, New York, and they plan on advancing all over. Now, you guys said you had a song on a CD that was passed out at Orb Tour, correct? Yes, the American Villain CD. Thanks, Jed. <laughs> There's always somebody to thank. Heck Connections. Yeah. Um, now let's go back when it all started. Um, when did you guys each personally start playing, listening to, deciding you wanted to do music? Oh, dude. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, when I was when I was probably three, four years old. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, back in the stone. <laughs> Shut up, Steve. <laughs> um, I rode a dinosaur out on the stage. <laughs> um, but um, I, I was up on stage with actually your dad, Travis, and Uncle Carlton, and, and a bunch of uh, a bunch of family. Um, and I had this little little plastic guitar, and my mom still has a picture of it. And it was me on stage with them at a bar up here in New York, in Elmira, called uh, the Eleven Board. So from that moment, I always loved the stage. I always loved music. We were raised around a lot of music. My mom always had music playing, Beatles, CCR, things like that. Um, so, I mean, from that point on, I always knew that I wanted to play music. So, yeah. I kind of knew. I kind of knew some of that. <laughs> right. I, everything except for the little plastic guitar. Yeah. But I wish I had the picture. <laughs> All right, Steve. What about you, my man? Well, ever, ever since I was young, I always had a deep I grew up around music a lot too, like with family rocking out with Led Zeppelin, you know, they had their little shindigs going on and, and we were just little kids running around and taking it all in. But um, really uh, what got me was I remember uh, I bought the uh, Nevermind album from Nirvana and uh, it was a little cassette plate or tape and I was at Walmart and you know, I used to be able to put those headphones on and uh, I yep. like yeah. Back in the day. Back in the day, <laughs> man. Back in the stone, stone age. But uh, yeah, I remember that. And uh, uh, Teen Spirit came out. I was like, oh, this is rocking, man. And, and uh, we got that uh, tape for me. And, and then it kind of took it off from there. And it was like Nirvana, Alice in Chains, and, and the, the acoustic album really, really got me going. And then I was around a couple of my family members and my cousins. They played guitar and stuff. And, and uh, I just. I remember always watching and being captivated by it, and, and I used to sing in church. And, and, uh, wow. Yeah, so. Badass going to church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, when it comes to influences, whether it be national or, like, personal, as Tom, I know, obviously, family members, my dad specifically being one of them, Absolutely. who are some influences, per personal and, and national? Well, like you said, your dad, uh, your dad was the one that really got me playing in bands, uh, doing covers and things like that. Um, he actually actually started me out. He, he wanted a bass player, so and I was like, "Oh, okay, I'll just play bass." You know, that's that's cool. I had no idea what playing bass was all about at the time, uh, but I wanted to play. Um, as far as like musical influences, um, I mean, listening listening to our uncles, Uncle Carlton and Uncle Clinton sing, that was that was huge for me because. The harmonies that they can do are just phenomenal. I mean, they are naturally harmonic together, and I, and I always love that. So that's where my initial love for harmonies came in. And then, of course, you know, bands like Metallica and, and Anthrax and Overkill, uh, Creator, Celtic Frost, Halloween. Halloween was a big, big vocal influence on me. Uh, and, and, I, and, and then... I remember I was 14 years old, and Allison Chain's first video for We Die Young came on this really weird late night uh, video channel, and I was just like, "Whoa, what is this?" You know, from the opening rip that, Dang, 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 and I was like, "Wow!" And then he started singing, and I was just like, completely floored because he had this growly, raspy, but totally clear voice that just blew my mind and then, you know, and, and 
Nirvana's Nevermind hit, you know, a couple years later, and I was like, whoa, this is awesome, you know, and I kind of, you know, it was, to me, it was more about the drums from Nirvana, though, you know, you, Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl, yep, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Grohl. the man of, Dave, uh, many, love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, man of many talents. Oh, yeah. oh, so Guitar, talented. drums, vocals, can't the guy even play, like, piano or he keyboard plays, or something like that? Yes. Yes, he's a good human being too. And yeah. he is. Yeah. He's an absolute, yeah, absolutely great human being. And then you know some of the other bands um, that came along as well: Soundgarden, uh, Mud Honey, Screaming Trees. We were just talking about this actually. So all of those bands had an influence. And then um, Pearl Jam's um, Mike McCready and Lane Staley did the Mad Season album. And I was just like, whoa. And it showed a completely different side of Lane and Mike. And it was, I mean, it was just an incredible album. Um, and I still, I can still sit and listen to it. And it still gives me chills. And it's, it's just, it's just, it's so deep, the whole entire album. Right. So, and that's the thing about Lane. Everything he did was from his soul out. And that's, that's what. That's what Mother Jupiter is to me. Mother Jupiter is, uh, is from the depths of my soul, from all of that uh, pain of life and the things that we've all gone through. Uh, that is, for me, the, the biggest thing is to be able to bring that out and put it through my hands into a guitar. Steve, what about you? Um, <clears throat> Well, I had, uh, like I said, my cousins, Ashley, and uh, her boyfriend, Dan, what's up, guys? Um, they, they were actually big in the Alice and James and stuff like that, too. I was huge in the grunge, man, like, and I Me still too. am. Like, I love Soundgarden. Um, like, my, uh, we're getting ready to have a baby boy soon, and the uh, girlfriend and I decided to name him Lane Christopher Lane after Lane Staley and Chris. Now. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is what That's it is. a great name. It is a great name. <laughs> That's why I'm giving it to him. But, um, but yeah, it just, it does, it, it speaks to me in some type of way that, like, no other music has been able to, like, touch my soul the way that stuff has. Absolutely. Like, their, their vocals and just all around musicians in general, I'm still waiting for the day to come back to around where, like, you know, history kind of repeats itself. And right. Music right. Is, so mm -hmm. I'm waiting for that grunge to come back. But, um, and it has somewhat. I somewhat, mean, yeah. Bands like, uh, there's an English band uh, called Wolf Alice that has that same unique style. Uh, their guitar player is, is extremely talented at doing really neat things on his guitar. Neat. <laughs> yeah. something, something an old man would say, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not old. <laughs> But um, no, I mean they're 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 one of the what they call the grunge revival bands, and there's and Wolf Alice is huge, and they're they're just becoming this bigger bigger thing. But um, just if you haven't heard of Wolf Alice, go listen to them. They're I'm I'm gonna have to because this is the first time I've heard about them. Oh, yeah, so me too. so good. They have a they have a female singer. I believe her name is Ellie, um, but she she's I mean not your typical female singer, you know. Right. Um, she's just really, really good at what she does. She's good at, you know, she plays guitar as well, and she's exceptional at that. So, anyway, um, dropping that for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, coming back to the band Mother Jupiter, um, how did you guys come up with that specific name? Because it it just doesn't seem like it's a band name. And what what does it mean? Well, so, I love sci-fi. I'm a huge sci-fi nerd, geek, whatever you want to say. You know, Star Wars and, and Star Trek and all, all the aliens, you know. So I really, I really love the idea of having a sci-fi type of name. So I started looking and I'm like, okay, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? Guys in the band, they were like, uh... You know they're okay, and, and then I'm like, well, what about you know what about Mother Ju, excuse me, Mother Jupiter, and, and um, they're like, yes, that's like perfect, you know, and that's, and so um, we we 
settled on that name because it was the sci-fi um, style name. And then Wayne Beeman um, from Troy Intermediate School, he drew us up a really cool poster. I don't have it on me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Wayne. Um, but um, and it's it's a, it's a really great poster. Which which one was that? Was it with the actual woman? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah, that's there. that's on your Facebook page, right? Yes. Yeah. I'll yeah, find it and I'll make sure I add it in with this. Awesome. Uh, but that's that's we all we all kind of like the sci-fi thing. We initially we were going to be like a, a space rock style band, but we ended up. Um, I, I don't write specific. I write whatever comes out of my soul. You know, I, whatever comes out. And, always lean more towards that, that grungy style riff um, band. I've had two people, Bobby Coles out of uh, Granville, PA, and then um, Jeff Stuber down in Florida. I sent both of them the, the, the demo tracks, and they were like, oh, well, that kind of sounds like Black Sabbath. And I'm like, oh, and I'm not a Sabbath fan. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not a Sabbath fan. Um, I like a couple of songs here and there, but mostly I just I don't care for them. But it's not surprising that the riffs that I've written, the things that I come up with, are, are inspired more by grunge. But you know, you go back and you ask the guys well, from that's the grunge bands who they were inspired by, and, and it Black was Black Sabbath. Like yeah. yeah. So. Like that's that's uh well when he came up with the name and he was throwing out ideas and stuff like uh, at first you know mother two brows like you know I was like well you know I don't know let let's let's give it a little bit to see what fits and then as time went on like it was perfect you know what it I mean? just sunk in it did yeah. it did it just yeah. ended up like mashing us and and uh, you know Jason Shelley the guy that uh, plays the lead <laughs> he uh, he's always been one of my favorite musicians out of the area killer good guitar player and he can just speak with that with that thing and um that was so, a, that was a suck up jason hey. <laughs> <laughs> but uh he no but no all in all like like he really he's an amazing musician he and, is. Uh, I, was, um, I was blown away when i first heard him with silent self and um, um but yeah i mean um it is like i've heard the whole sabbath influence as well and i like sabbath i do i got a lot of well, that, that kind of actually brings me to my next question is, um, if you had to compare what, so folks have a general idea, what do you think Mother Jupiter sounds like? I think it sounds like Mother Jupiter. That's... We, we don't sound anything like any of the area bands. We, we you know, we, we just, we're uniquely odd, I guess. So it's, it's hard to say, but I mean, if I was... Okay, when it comes to, um, I don't want to say genre because you're obviously rock. The rock guys. Rock! It, rock! Rock. Um, the one time I heard you guys rehearsing, and it might have been, it, it was just a guitar riff. It reminded me of Black Label Society. It just, something similar didn't sound like exactly like it. It just, right. it reminded me of it. So therefore, it was kind of like a sounds like you know because there's unfortunately always comparison well so. yeah absolutely I'd say sound garden and, and Alice in Chains Look, if Alice in Chains and Clutch got together and had a baby yeah right would be the yeah, there you go absolutely. well that's yeah that's a better way to put it I'm gonna have to reword my questioning here so um now Mother Jupiter what are each one of your roles in the band um Steve he's lead vocalist um I share vocals Steve writes some of the lyrics. I write some of the lyrics. Um, I write the music. Um, Shane or Shannon's playing drums. And then um, James. James. James Coops. Sorry, James. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I always have a hard time remembering his last name. So I, I, it never sticks in my brain. Sorry, James. Love you, man. Uh, but. Um, so, I mean, everybody adds their own little flavor. Everybody adds um, their own thing to it. We're, we're you know, um, Scott Farrell uh, was initially our drummer, and Scott's, you know, Scott's a great drummer. Great drummer. Great dude. Um, we had Eric. Eric 
Todd. Eric Todd on ET. base at first. Um, that just didn't it didn't mesh. Um, so that's where where we hired James. Um, and then just started pumping out songs left and right. Yeah, yeah, it was effortless. Like I mean, it was kind of I was blown away out of all the projects I've ever been in. Like it was painstaking to get out, you know, two new songs as we're like these guys, it was just like bang, bang, boom, and, and like, and it felt good, you know? Right. And just like every band, I mean, we've had setbacks, we've had, you know, we've had people leave, uh, Scott, Scott was the first one to leave, um, and then Jason Shelley recently left, so um, we're having auditions for lead guitar players. With our first single, not that simple, that was released on the on the uh, American Villain CD, um, that was actually the, the drums were played by Jesse Sprinkle out of um, uh, Rochester. He's the Demon Hunters original guitar drummer. He was on their first two albums. Um, he was with Poor Old Lou and uh, Dead Poetic. Dead Poetic. Nice. Yeah, he's very a, nice. Yeah, very cool. He's he's, uh, he was a, he's another inspiration of mine that. Uh, in the local area. He played with Nationals, but like he's a right. right down there. Right. Guy. Now, you had mentioned something about past bands, older bands. What are some of the past product projects you guys have been involved with? Uh, Whether it be cover or original music? So, mostly um, with, with me, I've done, I did uh, another round. I've done uh, Caddy Wampus, which was, um, I think, for five years. For Caddy Wampus. Um, we're going to do a, a <coughs> small show here next summer. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fan there, Travis. So, yeah, we're going to we're, we're doing we're doing a small show next summer. Um, our drummer Chris asked us if we could do it, and we were like, yeah, you know, no problem. Um, and then let's see, I do a Beatles tribute three piece with uh, Paul Speck. Tapper, yes, yeah. Kevin Tapper. Sorry, Kevin. I'm for crap with names. And I've known Kevin for like five, six years now. Sorry, Kevin. Um, and then, let's see. There, there was Cloaca and Corroded. Cloaca that was years corroded, ago. Yeah, years ago. I was, ago. I was like around. I was like 16 when Corroded. Because <laughs> I remember you getting me into a couple shows. So, yep. yeah. yeah. I was always the bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's see. There was... Feeling Fingers Utopian Experience, which was um, a long, long time ago. That was the first original slash cover project that, that I had been involved with. Um, so uh, it's, it's a culmination of years. I decided I wanted to write songs. I, I got kind of tired of doing covers. Covers are great. Don't get me wrong. They're fun. Um, I love doing the Beatles thing. But let's be honest, folks, we do it for the money. So, and there's a lot of there's a lot of clubs and bars and stuff around here that just they just aren't. They don't well, they don't want to pay. They don't want to pay. No. And I'll tell you what, if if you ask a plumber or an electrician to do a job for X amount of dollars, they would tell you no, they weren't going to do it. And then you go and you find one that will do it. Please keep in mind, we have bills and equipment and things to pay for. I mean, strings are six bucks. So while six, let's say I pay eighteen. Cheap strings. Are six cheap bucks. strings are six bucks. I pay eighteen dollars a set for my strings, and they only last me three shows. So you know. Um, yeah. Another round. Another I didn't hear you say anything about another round. Yeah, that was the first said, one. Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah. See how much I paid attention. <laughs> but yeah, no, I used to like watching you guys too. Sticking out while well, looking over the fence. You know, there's the door charge. Oh, but, I, mean, <laughs> I still got the show. But um, Another round was uh, Jason Chelly on bass, Jeff Holslander on drums, Kevin Tapper on kick keys, ass crew, man. Um, Paul Speck on guitar, and um, myself on lead vocals. That's uh, 
that was um, my first cover band that I've seen out here. And then it was Lithium Highway. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, uh, anyway, I wasn't really in all that many projects. It was just, you know, garage stuff. We never really got out much, but the first band was 10 milligrams, and we had like 10 fans. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, you gotta start somewhere. That's right, right man. We had some kick ass songs, guys, I remember. Um, and then uh, actually, uh, through all that, like I did a lot of acoustic stuff, just jamming. And then um, back in 2010, I had a friend that passed away, and uh, that's when I met Jesse Sprinkle. And uh, we had discussed maybe uh, making a, an album um, in memory of him and stuff. And, and Jesse agreed to do it, and, uh, and so. I was part of that project with him and stuff, and he did all the all the work on it and all that. And um, but it was a really good album, so that was really fun. But uh, then after that, uh, we had uh, Headcase Ivan. That was out of Elmira, and that was me, Matt Southerd, and uh, Eric Todd. And then we have uh, one song that we recorded with, with Sprinkle on the drums, and that was uh, Mesa. And that's that's on YouTube. So if you guys, if anybody wants to go to my page, they can check that out. So Steve, Steve and Doll. Um, and then after that, it was uh, Mother Jupiter, and I'm also jamming with some guys in a band called Exit Wounds. Uh, with Steve Good, Chuck Knott, uh, Timothy Wise, and uh, uh, my buddy Kyle with a C uh, <laughs> instead of with a K. <laughs> but uh, they're doing some like metal stuff, and I'm playing guitar with them and backup vocals. So that's very cool. Yeah, we're, we're, I think pretty much all of us except for James are involved in the different projects, but James also writes his own music as yeah. well and, and does a lot of recording stuff. He's our, he's our tech guy, so um, right. he's, he's a good bass player, built, built his own bass cabinet and that thing sounded freaking amazing. So, uh, but. The uh, football game next door has got the national anthem going. I didn't hear that. Hey. Yeah, this is probably the coolest thing about living here is I can watch football. Nice. Um, so when it comes to writing you guys' songs, how, what is your songwriting process? Is there one guy? Do you all band together? Does Do you go home, think of ideas, write shit down, play stuff on your instruments and say, hey, I got this cool piece of art? How do you guys go about it? All of it. Every, yeah, every it's, bit of that. It's, it's generally um, like Not That Simple was a riff that I came up with. Just I, Steve and I had gotten together and and I started playing this riff and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know. So and then I just added to it and when the other guys came in to, to jam, it was all it, was, it just came together and, and yeah. Jason's like, well, what about you know what about a chorus? I'm like, well, how about we do this? And he's like, that kind of sounds like this other band and I'm like, that's all right, you know. <laughs> But well, <laughs> so um, Steve had the actually with that song with not that simple Steve actually had lyrics already all written out and it just I mean he went okay this is it you know he just he already had the lyrics they, they were written down and he started singing it and of course you go through changes with it but I mean relatively it's remained the same yeah through the whole song I actually process. wrote those lyrics that day because my boss. Pissed me off. <laughs> you know, I noticed that's when a lot of a lot of uh, truthful stuff and stuff pen up comes up is when you're angry and upset. Yeah. You know, and all it takes is one person to trigger you. Yeah. So that's Thanks so much. that 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 saying. Uh, I was sorry I said that. I was just angry. That's bullshit. Half the time, I think that's real honest feelings coming out. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Song songwriting is. I mean, songs should be. Full of emotion, you know. I, I see a lot of guys that, um, and, and I respect the shredders. I do. I respect them. They're amazing. Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Ingbe Malmsteen, and a lot of the new guys from like Beartooth and, and uh, yeah, and they're they're great. <laughs> uh, and then uh, uh, animals as leaders. I mean, they, you know, those guys can shred. But to me, it's those slow Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, 
grungy, groove rock. Groove, you know, yeah, riffs yeah, that totally. Really I remember Vinnie Paul saying, "If it doesn't have any groove, he's not interested." Yeah, absolutely, you know. And and Dimebag, I mean, uh, Pantera is a huge inspiration to, to us too. I mean, a lot of people in the rock world, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, oh, yeah. Here's here's my tribute to Dime. <laughs> you know, I always wear that. Uh, <coughs> but the, yeah, I mean, oh. I forgot to mention uh, Brainstem. My my uncle Pat uh, Pat Gilman. He's the Pat the Hammer Gilman. He's a drummer out of Rochester, and uh, I used to travel or get you know book them gigs and stuff like that. And uh, <laughs> that's how I. Uh, oh yeah. Well, we're just gonna <laughs> I got right. pa I got Pantera Pantera going on uh, Pandora, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and we mention it, and there it is. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Pat's a great drummer, and uh, that band in general, uh, they have crazy good musicians and they are metal as fuck and, and every one of them has we say fuck <laughs> yeah she can say fuck <laughs> actually Mark Thurston when I did his interview just before I flicked the camera on he goes so what kind of questions are you going to ask he goes you're not going to ask me how big my dick is are you <laughs> coming out of Mark you don't expect that and I almost just as a smart ass I almost asked him that as the last question but I so refrained how big is your dick <laughs> <laughs> hi Mark <laughs> So, as a band, um, what is the biggest challenge you guys have faced since you've been trying to write, record, put that music out there just to get people to listen to the stuff? Uh, you know, <laughs> the biggest challenge thus far, okay, so we played, we played uh, a show at the Montage Music Hall Appreciate up in Rochester. Uh, thanks, Randy. Yes. That was a great opportunity. And we'd only been together for, what, five months yeah. at that point? So. Yeah. We're talking, you know, five months in, we had five songs. We had um, I Am, Not That Simple, Hush, From the Inside, from the inside and, Mothership. and Mothership. So we had five songs together as a band, and it was it was Jason Chelly, um, James Hoots, Scott Farrell, Steve, and myself. And we're like, oh, wow, you know, we're going to open this show while well, it was... It was a band from France called Italia, and we love you guys. You rock. Yeah. Can't wait to do another show with you. Um, who was Eve to Adam? Eve to Adam. Those guys are cool. Though. Taki's yeah. awesome. Yeah, the guitar player um, Bro Brody or Brady. Sorry, man. Brady came and hung out at the hotel room That's with right. us afterwards. He's also a music magician. Magician. Yeah. yeah. So nice. Yeah, and then awesome. S Smile Empty Soul and Flaw. Yeah. So we, we got to we got we were the to open only local those. band yeah. there. We were the only local band. So there. we got to open that show, and there was probably thirty people in the whole place. But still, I mean, for a band that's been together for five, maybe six months, to go up there and just we got a lot of reaction out of it. Though. We did. So that was really cool. A lot of the band <clears throat> members came up to you know me afterwards, and we were just like, wow, you know, you guys are really good. You know how long you guys been. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't believe we'd only been together for like six right. months. They're like, you guys rock, you know, you guys are tight. And, and, I'm, and we're just like, thanks. Right. You, just, <laughs> you must have smoked a lot of weed before you were done. <laughs> You're like, you did good too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thanks, man. <laughs> but I think that uh, I really, uh, with this whole band, is, is the whole harmony thing with Tom and I. Um, I could give a shit about being a front man. I don't care. You know what I mean? It's not my whole thing. Um, what I care about is the emotion, like you were talking about, behind our music. And uh, Alice in Chains was my, is my oh, yeah. know, favorite band of all time. And that has a lot to do with the vocals and how it was delivered. And even Lane. And the harmonies. Even Lane was, in, was, was uh, inspired by the Beatles and their harmonies. Yeah. And that's, that's where a lot of his harmonies came. Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. Same with him. You know, he was a, he was a huge Beatles fan. Dave Grohl is like the biggest Beatles fan. Huge, very yeah. big. I mean, Beatles Paul fan. McCartney played on their last album, yep. Concrete and Gold. Yep. Played drums. I was like, wow. Yeah. You know, what an honor to to have somebody so awesome, a songwriter like Paul McCartney, play drums on your album when you're. I mean, Dave Grohl's like. <laughs> oh, crazy. Good. You know, so. But, yeah, 
I remember, like I said, we and then we, well, he hosted an open mic that one night, yeah. and uh, and then I showed up, and and uh, I asked him, I was like, you know, he's like, all right, well, you want someone to play? Yeah. So I said, hey, do you want to do some backup vocals with me? And he was like, sure. And like, without ever singing together before, you know, we did it, and it was it was pretty spot on, you know, for never doing it and not knowing, you know, where the other person was gonna go. You know, it was, it was really cool, and then Tom approached me about the project, you know, wanting to throw something together, and, and then he did. And, and like, that's one, that's my favorite part of it all, is just the harmony, man. Cool. Yeah. As the, the biggest I, challenge, the biggest challenge right now is the, is the uh, circulating members. Yeah. yeah. You know, so right. That's, that's I, you know what, though, I really don't think, I. well, I know, you guys know this, you're not alone. Right. Every band, I mean, oh shit, God. I just watched a... a um, video, a documentary on the Foo Fighters and all the member changes they had gone through, you know. I watched something on Bad Company just yesterday. They went through a few, you know, I mean, members dying and replacing and, you know, so I think... I said I'm starting to feel like Dave Mustaine. <laughs> oh, and I yeah. love Megadeth, yeah. man. I love yeah. Megadeth. They're amazing and they're an amazing live band and the songs yeah. are yep. great, but, you know, look at how the, look at all the member lineups that yep. they've had. I, but I really, I mean, I hope that once, once we're set with members, that everybody's going to stay, yeah. um, because we're going to be touring, we're going to be doing a lot of things, uh, and, and we're, you know, we're almost ready. We, we need one or two more songs to start our EP, and we're going to release that. That's the plan, and as I mean, as far as record companies and, and all that stuff, no thanks. You can, um, I think, um, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis have definitely proved that you can achieve success and fame oh, yeah. and whatnot without a record label. And if they're not the only one. There's tons of other people that have actually oh, achieved huge Modest success. Now, one of the one of the biggest shittiest bands out there. It's I I think it's definitely who who hears it. You get it in the right hands. Absolutely. I mean, whether it's a record company or not. So. And, and honestly, I mean, we've we we've had people step up and pay attention that that I was actually surprised. They're like, that's a really great song. You know, it's not just the public, but other other musicians and. And people, like we said, you know, as far as the montage, you know, them, those guys were like, you guys rock. Yeah. You guys are great. You felt the sincerity from them. It wasn't, it wasn't just because you were a fellow band right, playing. Right, right, right. They, yeah. were, they were intrigued by the way, we, the way we sounded, the way that we put things together. And Randy from the montage even said, nobody sounds like you guys. Yeah. You know, no, yeah, no, a lot of people you know, say that. Yeah. You guys are unique. He said, I haven't heard anything like that in years. You know? Right. So, right. Um, so, well, that, well, that being said, what is you guys' goal, your focus? What direction do you want Mother Jupiter to go in? Control the world, man. Yeah. I mean, there ain't nothing I mean, better. the ultimate goal, yeah, is, is the world, you know. Um, world domination. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. We're running for president. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that that's ultimately it. I just want that. I, I never wanted to like. I never cared about making it big or anything like that. And the money deal. That's all just. I want the money too. Well, I mean, that's, the <laughs> I think I think nice. that comes with part of the success, uh, though. Right, yeah. you know? right. But the steps getting there is what I'm looking forward to. That's what you know really really drives me. It's the it's. It's the hard work. Exactly. Well, you know, I, I think ACDC stones. put it the best. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Right, Absolutely. Man. And I know you can't stand ACDC. No, I can't. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm going to hurt off Angus. But, uh, yeah, no, no, not a not a fan. But I respect them for who they are and how they still, to this day, fill stadiums. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's definitely... Um, that's when you know you've achieved success when you're filling a stadium yeah, straight up. Yeah, and they've been yeah. doing it since 1976. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. I don't know if that's precise or not. <laughs> but, uh, now, when you guys 
go on stage to a gig, do you guys get nervous at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The montage, when, when, when we went on at the montage. Oh, was, God. I, I was... I was so nervous and, and my hands didn't want to move and I was sweating and it was so funny. I, I've always like if I'm if I'm the singer for a cover band, I get a little nervous, but going on playing your own original music, that's it's a much different thing, especially I I'm not a guitar player. I write songs, but I'm not like this fantastic guitar player. I mean, I'm I'm learning. I started taking lessons from Tommy Cook out of Sarah. And Tommy's a great guy and an amazing guitar player. Tommy's very good. Yeah. Very good. So, and I watch him and he does these things and, and you know, and it, it just, it, it amazes me. But it's, that's not me. So being on stage with a guitar, aside from acoustic guitar, which I have, you know, it's much different. Um, but going on that stage with that and knowing I was going to have to, Knowing I was going to be singing and stuff like that too, because I do the harmonies and I do some parts. And, and Steve and I just started trading. We just wrote a song um, called "Fallen Angel," and and I would we're trading on and off vocals. So I'll do a part, yeah. Steve will do a part, and then we do the chorus together. So I mean, song songs are coming together. But as far as going on stage, yeah, I mean, I was pretty much pissing myself. So. Oh God, man! I <laughs> and wanna... then. And then we did we did the, the Ithaca Radio show too. That was so bad. I was still nervous that night, and I still screwed up one of the songs, but nobody noticed. So, right. You know. I did, we didn't have all that much of an audience for the radio show. We just had the guys with the. Camera. I was gonna say that was in studio, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, was, yeah. That was. So, yeah. The people that were there just watching were people we knew. And then uh, the guys we didn't know were holding the cameras and all that stuff. But uh, that was really fun. Thanks to Ryan, by the way. Yes. And um, is it WBBR? WBBR 93.5 uh, out of Ithaca. So, so last, check out that station. Last, last, exit, will be last exit for the Lost. Last folks, you can check the them lost. out, too. Yeah, got org, yep. So, um, great, great guys. Great studio. We had a lot of fun. Do. I had a lot of fun hanging out. I want to go hang out again. Now, was it was it late night when you guys were? Oh, yeah. I was going to say, did. because when my brothers Brad and Chad, their band went up there, they were like it was two, one. three in the morning yeah. type of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. But it was awesome. It was great. Like, it was. I, I loved it. it. Total rock star lifestyle, right? It was, man. It was. <laughs> and then one step from following. One step uh, from one step following, from following yes. They were like uh, two bands behind us that went up on there. They did a great job. Yeah, they were sick. Wow, they're, they're just an amazing Those guys aren't, man. they ain't human. They Syracuse, New York. If you don't know who One Step From Falling is, you should. Yes. The whole world. The whole world. Absolutely. If you don't know who One Step is, you need to check them out. But, um, Steve, yeah, no. Bob, Pete, Josh. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, the, the Flaw Show. I was I, I thought I was mentally prepared, but I totally wasn't mentally prepared. You know, <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> my hot girlfriend right there in front of me, and then like I'm looking down, and then all of a sudden I see Flaw's guitar player coming in, <laughs> and then he's standing right next to her, and then here comes Tacky from Eve to Adam walking by, and so I'm like, oh my god. What do I do now? You know. Like, <laughs> so I had my like I pulled the whole Lane Staley thing, man, and I'm fucking. I got the sunglasses on and shit, and it's. Uh, but I I did my best, man, and apparently I did I did well enough, even though I I was still nervous even after we walked on. Oh the stage. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, I was sweating, and then and then the uh, bassist from Talia tried to help me get my amp off the stage. The amp weighed more than her. <laughs> yeah. It, it did. I thanked her, and I still do thank you. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, and I was a little embarrassed because I didn't quite have a grip on it. And I was still nervous. I was supercharged, but I was still nervous from the show until I got off the stage, man. I was, I mean, my hands were shaking. So it was, it was pretty cool, but it was a great experience. Great. We're doing uh, Rob Horton's uh, birthday bash. Up in Rochester, December Rick. 8th. Or Rick Horton. Sorry. Sorry, Rick. He's great with names. I'm <laughs> terrible with names. Sorry, Rick. It's the um, age thing, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's that's funny because a lot of a lot of people are, are like, oh, well, aren't you a little old to be playing original music and thinking you're going to tour the world? No. 
No. Because I'm not dead. <laughs> Don't ever let somebody tell you that you're too old to live your dreams. It, it's all up to the individual, man. Absolutely. What drives a certain person, I, I'll always encourage somebody. I don't care. You know what I mean? I Whatever. Just, if something, you can see the passion in someone just by the way they speak about it. You know, I've had, my girlfriend tells me too, she's like, you light up every time you talk about Mother Jupiter, you know, to other people. It's like, and, and she loves it. You know, I'm like, you know, that's what I try to do with, with other people too, man. You know, if someone's passionate about with someone, good job. As long as they're not going out and raping and killing somebody and passionate <laughs> around with that. No right? Vikings here! <laughs> right. You know, but like, hey, you like soccer, you like volley tennis, you like, or there's, whatever. There's been a ton of, ton of people that have gone on to do different things. I had a, I had a, a, a teacher that was a Wall Street person and made millions of dollars off from Wall Street. He was 65 years old, decided to go back to college to become a teacher. And you know what? He went on to become a successful teacher. And he really loved what he did. His whole life he hated what he did on Wall Street. I mean, when he was young, you know, but what he went on to do, to be this amazing teacher, and he was, and he was one of my favorite people. Totally, and I, I, I understand what people mean by there's different variations of success. Some people just want a house, a nice car, a family, a wife, and that's success. Some people want to tour the world and play music. That's success. You know, you just want to get that dream job and live your life. That's success. So everybody's got a different Absolutely. different eye about it. Absolutely. So, so, Travis, here's a question for you. If you were to tour the world with any band, what band would it be? Huh. Go. You're thinking I'd say Metallica, right? No. no. I particularly, I absolutely love a band from Phoenix, Arizona called Digital Summer. Yeah. Fucking hands down, they're amazing. To me, when I say it sounds like it's a mashup of Seven Dust, whom they are actually friends with, and Breaking Benjamin. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, it's they're just amazing. Their album uh, Breaking Point is fucking spot on. That's actually what Ben Anderson was playing drums in that band, now plays drums for nothing more. Oh, nice. Which we all know is climbing the charts, yeah, I but I more. sat down. And they've been around for a long time yeah, too. I I sat down in my basement twice a day for like two three hour drumming sessions, just listening to their CD Breaking Point on repeat. And although it's terrible, that's how I learned how to do the double kick. That's how my timing got better. That's how my rolls got a little bit better. Um, to this day, I still can't play drums like that. But hey, <laughs> it, it was fun playing music. It's fun. It is. That's what it's supposed to be. And if it's not fun, you need to rethink something. Right. Absolutely. Something's wrong. You know, yeah. you know I, get, I get stressed out because in, in about like writing songs. Oh, i got to come up with the next idea to bring it in. What am I going to do? You know, okay, well, I've got this riff. What am I going to do with that? And it really is start getting stressed. And then I, and then I just go, you know what? This is this is what I love. This is my passion. Yeah. Why am I getting stressed out? So yeah. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll set my guitar down and I'll walk away from it for a couple of yep. days. Right? You need to take breaks. Yeah. Yep. And that, that 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 brings me back to where you were asking us about the whole writing process. Do you want to know something? The best lyrics that I can come up with are the ones that are right off the top of my head. I'll have us recorded on our little cell phone, right? And I'll just be freestyling along with stuff. I'm like, damn. Did I just say that? Like, I mean, right. it, and then and right. I'll write it down as I'm like re-listening to these songs that we just were messing around with. Go back to practice the next time. Then, oh hey, I got this. And then that's where he would come in and he'd be like, oh yeah, all right, why don't we change this there or something? You know, and then like then we got a song. It's right. all just to me, music isn't what gets in the way is the thought of it. It's the thought part of like, okay, what am I gonna do now? Yeah, and then all of a sudden my brain is like, boom. Right. Well, that's right the way it is with doing my comedic videos online. If I sit and think, all right, what can I do that's funny? Nothing. Right. I'll be eating dinner and go, oh shit, that would be hilarious. Yeah, it's yeah. when you're when you're just do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like one night I was sitting eating dinner with my girl. We're sitting at the restaurant, and I literally spit food out of my mouth because I started <laughs> laughing at an idea I had. Right. And it was about earning your red wings. Oh, gross. So, yeah. Gross. Oh. And I took a bunch of ketchup and smeared it on my face, <laughs> obviously. But earning your wings is gross, folks. Don't do that. Uh, um, now, when it comes to, to music today, new music coming out, 
Who are some of you guys' favorite bands? Bad Flower. I was just, Ghost is, a, is a, I love Ghost. That song, I don't know what it is about. It brings me back to that '90s feeling again, man. Was, yeah, they're they're a Ghost is a is a superb combination of '80s music, '90s music, and, and early making, 2000s. Yeah, yeah, and making it like and making it seem all new. They have such a that song Square Hammer has such an '80s feel to it. But it's modernized and it's really, right. really, really well. Catchy. And that's they're they're one of the bands. That this interview isn't about me, but just weighing in here. <laughs> um, it's they're one of the bands that's like they have those songs. For me, I can pick and choose what I like. Like their new song, Rats. I love Rats. Love Rats. It's I think it's a great tune. That's another oh one God. of those ones, though. That, love it. That is very '80s sounding. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But modernized. Yeah. yeah. You know? it's, it's new. Old yeah. sounding but new. Yeah, you and know? guitar players in that band. And I've yeah. I've always yeah. said that they sound like a new classic rock band. Yeah. They do. That's they, exactly what I said yeah. the first time I heard them. Yep. And then even uh, the one that uh, sounds like uh, Zeppelin now. Um, Greta Van Fleet. Yes, Greta Van Fleet. Oh my gosh, they are Zeppelin, man. They, they are, are Zeppelin. Well, you can tell just by the the lead vocalist, by the way, dressed. They're definitely into that era of yep. you and know it's Flower a great Child. Era. You know, that's it a was, great Zeppelin era. was great. And, uh, well, you know, I never can say it so <laughs> But, dude, Zeppelin was one of another huge influence of mine. Jimmy Page and, and Robert Plant and all of the guys, man. John Bonham and... I have great respect for that band. I really do. Oh. I like a handful of songs. Every one Sorry, of their guys, albums, it's not my thing. I know every album, every song. I don't know. I could just... I remember I had uh, the MP3. Of, and it was all of their stuff on there, and I would have it in my ears walking to work every day man and then playing the shit at work and i just i didn't have a song i didn't like i don't know that's just me though from tangerine to to um, over the hills and far away rooster oh the roosters aren't <laughs> there awesome um he's got some good music going no on. Yeah. yeah my my pandora is loaded with stuff from like the 80s 90s today heavy screaming metal to old bluesy stuff so yeah i have a wide variety i listen to i don't like to be closed-minded yes. never be closed-minded folks I listen to beethoven bach chopin tchotchke i listen to classical music i listen to r b i listen to motown i listen oh, to motown. 90s yeah. grunge i listen to I listen to like the heaviest metal, black metal. All the metal. good musicians do, man. Yeah. Oh, you yep. Know, yep. And they, 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 they say that if you're gonna be like in music, you should have an open mind. If you're gonna get better at music, you should learn different types of music. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. And that's that's one of the first things I was told by a pastor of mine. He was like, no, you know, uh, he bought me my first guitar tuner and uh, capo and all kinds of stuff in a in a, in a book and. He was like, now you know, one one good one good piece of advice I'm gonna give you is just don't listen to rock music. You know, listen. To, <laughs> listen. To I love Johnny music. Cash. Yeah. You know, people uh, yeah. You know, people want to lop Johnny Cash into the country category, but Johnny was he was a rocker. Yeah, no, back in rocker, his day, man. special. Yeah, back in his day, he was like, fuck you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you see it. I mean, Folsom yeah. Prison Blues. I yeah. mean, that's such a great song. Yeah. He, was, he was the Phil Anselmo of his time. <laughs> he really was. Yeah. You know? yeah, that's I've never heard that, but that's that's awesome. Elvis, yeah. Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash were were two. Um, they are the they they are the pioneers and the godfathers of rockabilly. They really are. So yeah. they're not they. They may have done some country style stuff, but. Look at Johnny Cash. I mean, he did. He redid a Nine Inch Nails song and made it his own. And even Trent Reznor was like, "That's not even my song anymore. That's that's Johnny's song, yeah. you know." So, yeah. and that's. I mean, that's. And I, I take that. I, I take all of those influences that we grew up with, you know, from listening to your dad's vinyl albums and, and listening to my mom's vinyl albums, 45s and things like that, and for you that don't know what a 45 is, research your history, kids. <laughs> or if you don't know what vinyl is, period. <laughs> well, vinyl's made a, a big enough comeback. That yeah. I think yeah. That, um, the only problem with the new vinyl, and it's, in my opinion, it still sounds too digital. Um, 
it doesn't have that scratchy, warm feeling. Right, that it's like staticky kind of. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, a lot of a lot of people don't know personally, but what do you guys like to do outside of music? Your your home life, something when you're not writing a song, playing your guitar, singing, whatever. I, I, I was going to give an inappropriate answer, but, you know, um, but, uh, this, this is, this is what I do. This is, this is my baby girl, Izzy, and her, her Izzy name came from Izzy Stradlin from Guns N' Roses, so, and then my other kids, they have, I have Xander Kai and Lane Cantrell, Xander Kai, um, Kai came from Kai Hansen, the guitar player for Halloween and Gamma Ray. Uh, Lane Cantrell, of course, Lane Staley, Jerry Cantrell, Valves and Chains. But Izzy, she uh, she came from, she, her name came from Izzy Stratton. That's her nickname. But um, other than that, I mean, I work, you know, I work hard. Uh, but, and music is, music is, it's my drug. Yeah, that's really pretty is. much all I, I do out of, even with my spare time, but family, man, you know, like I got, like I said, I got the kid on the way and uh, you know, beautiful girlfriend Nikki and her two beautiful boys that she has, um, you know, so that's, that's it. Like I want to really get them into the music too, because her two boys that she has now, they're, they're full of energy and, you know, they're, they're full of life, man, and I remember being that age and and, uh, you know, but I still remember music just being, like, everything, you know, like, it just, when I, when I was, in, even in church, just, like, I loved singing, I loved being around instruments, and if, if I grew up without, you know, learning how to play guitar or something, I'd probably be in prison right now, well, or lost, or dead. You know, it's funny you should mention church, because, actually, that's where Axl Rose Guns and Roses, that's where he Did you say it. Axel or Asshole? No, I think he said Axel. <laughs> I said Axel. <laughs> Axel Rose from Guns N' Roses, that's where he learned how to sing. I mean, he was in the church choir, and he would he would change his voice, and that's how he learned how to do those things. So, um, with, his, with his voice, the, you know, he would just change the pitch of his voice and the sound of his voice so that, so that he could do different parts and sound different. It's, it's a pretty neat back. He's got one of those things that the, the, the bull riders use on the bulls, right, where they're tied around their nuts. No, I don't like think that's good. Right. <laughs> but I'll smack you in the nuts with a hammer. No, I, got, I got two more questions for you guys, and this one is actually the very first I've ever asked, and it's really weird. When you guys go on stage, what's your attire? What do you wear on stage? And the reason I ask is because I've watched many Metallica concerts, which I'm going to my first one at the end of October, I'm super stoked about. But I notice Kirk, Lars, and James always wear like these really tight, stretchy sweatpants jeans. I don't know what it is. Um, and I think, how do their nuts feel? In that? <laughs> I well, here's the thing, though. Okay, way back, way back in the '80s, when those tight ass pants were like the thing, Kirk was wearing. These stretchy jean pants. They look tight, but they're really flexible. And I don't know if he had a hand in designing them or what. But I know that they were. I mean, he's a he's a bean pole anyway, you know. He's right. He's not very big. big. No. So, um, but those those stretchy pants, the, that stretchy material that you see nowadays. I mean, that's been around for a long time. And the, and the you know the the tight the tight around the ankle legs you know they're still they're still real flexible um, so that's that's what they wear they don't they're not actually they're not blue jean you know heavy material they're actually right. a flexible right. material i just wear all black and uh, that seems to just be my thing it's appropriate for rock music right it's black so yeah black. i mean it's and usually but they are tight, though. My clothes are tight, and the whole nuts thing. Like, <laughs> I have a girlfriend, so I don't, right. I, I'm not. You know, I have no nuts, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, um. But yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, you know, I wear these, and jeans, t-shirt. There's, you know, it's just rock and roll is. Rock and roll is a stripped down, you know. Just Here it is, type thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So 
jeans, t-shirt, whatever. You know, other people wear face paint, you know, makeup, whatever. And, and I've been there, done that, you know. And it was cool at the time. I mean, Alice Cooper, you know, Alice still wears, wears the makeup and it looks great. It's a great stage thing. Um, some of the other bands, um, Olivia from Undead Messenger, she, she wears makeup. They all, they all wear. They do. Paint. We're on Dead Messenger? Yeah. 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 But Olivia always does hers this fancy, and she's really, really good at it. So there's a shout-out to you and the Undead Messengers, yeah. Olivia. Yeah. So um, my last question for you guys, because we definitely got to ramp it up here. Um, <laughs> it's been a while. Well, it's been about an hour. Um, oh, we still got to play our song, too. You gotta yeah, they're, they have a song coming up, which I'm going to stop, pause it for a little bit. Intermission, I guess you could say. And um, we're going to hear from the guys from Mother Jupiter. But my last question is, do you guys have any words of wisdom or inspirational words for up and coming musicians or new bands out on the scene today? Because you guys are older than I, you know, you've been doing it longer. What are your words of encouragement? Uh, don't give up. No matter what anybody tells you, don't give up. Um, be true to yourself. Write songs that you would want to hear write songs that make you happy. Don't write songs for other. I mean, you can write songs for other people, but always stay true to yourself. Yeah, um, just don't give up, man. And don't don't let the, the naysayers, you know, rule, you know, your, your way of thinking and your drive and ambition. You know, use that as energy to, to get to where you want to be. And, um, you know, and, and always encourage other musicians and stuff. Don't put people down. Sometimes people suck. Don't, you know, just just give them a clap. You know, clap. And clap, clap. it shows people. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Get yeah. excited, yeah. man. It's music. Like, even if they suck or whatever, just just clap. Like, it's just come on, you know. Oh, well, like, like Dave Grohl said in an interview, he said, if you're in a garage band, if you suck, you suck. Right. You enjoy it? Keep fucking going. That's right. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, all right, guys, up next, we have a performance here from Tom and Steve of Mother Jupiter. Stay tuned. Got that? Got that. Here we go, guys. We have Mother Jupiter, Tom and Steve, performing their song, I Am.
Jupiter.